This is a lesson on the scheme of repetition. If you don't know what a scheme is, I recommend you watch the Style Academy lesson titled Tropes and Schemes before you watch this one. You gotta walk before you can fly, you know what I mean? But just to review anyway, schemes are language patterns you can use in writing to draw attention to the craft of your own writing or to create effects for your audience. There are four broad categories of schemes, and we're going to focus on repetition in this lesson. As thinking beings, we are pattern lovers. We make sense of our surroundings by finding patterns that tell us how to experience and understand the world. And the world accommodates. We find patterns in nature, art, music, mechanics, architecture, even jokes and stories and behaviors. Patterns bring us pleasure. They order our universe. And as symbol makers, we ourselves create patterns to connect with other people. Here's an example I like from pop culture. Some of you are fans of web memes. A meme is a simple message, an image, or an image that gets repeated with slight variations over and over on the web. So some of you may know who this is. This is Michaela Maroney. Uh, she's an American Olympic gymnast who was not amused when she won the silver medal in the vault at the 2012 London Summer Games. And just for the record, she was a gold medalist in other events too, but she wasn't happy about this particular one. Well, people took Michaela's image and created thousands of memes with her not being impressed at all kinds of stuff. So this meme became quite popular, and in fact, there was a Tumblr site you can see in the bottom right-hand corner dedicated to people creating memes about Michaela being not impressed with things like the Statue of Liberty. Anyway, so if we are pattern lovers, if patterns help us make sense of the world, if patterns help us bring, you know, give us pleasure and help us connect with others, do we find patterns in writing? Well, of course we do. Let's take a look at an example from The Daily Show's book, America, the book. This is uh, John Stewart and his writing crew. Go ahead and pause the video now and read this to yourself, and let's think about the patterns that emerge. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? It's the phrase, the president. What effects does that create by repeating the phrase, the president, in every sentence? It creates anticipation, doesn't it? It also makes it so at the end when it says, but the president cannot make laws. It makes that last sentence, it gives it more punch, and it makes it funny. You see also that with patterns come uh, variation. Each of these sentences is telling us something different about what the president can what the president could try to do to change laws. They're all different, but they all begin with the president. So the cool thing is that you can do this kind of thing in your own writing. Of course you can. The purpose of this lesson is to introduce you to methods for using repetition as a rhetorical device in your writing so you can connect with readers more effectively. You can use repetition on multiple levels from ideas to language structures and in this lesson, we're going to focus on repetition in language structure, the way that you write your sentences. So one way you can create repetition is to repeat certain words. And I'm not going to read these examples to you out loud because I think that would drive you insane. So I'm just going to show you some of these examples. And if you want, at any point during this lesson, pause it and read the examples to yourself. You can also repeat certain phrases. You see in uh, Abraham Lincoln's uh, Gettysburg Address, the phrase of the people, by the people, for the people gets repeated here in this, the climax of that famous speech from 1863. But you can also use full clauses as repetition. As you can see here from this quote by the poet Adrian Rich, Finally, you can repeat the structure of 
uh, the language in entire sentences, sentence after sentence, sounding just like each other. From this, uh, for example, in this famous quote by Lyndon Johnson about the civil rights movement and race problems in the United States. Let's look at three different schemes of repetition that will teach you how to use these structures in various places in your sentences. And a brief warning, these terms come from Greek. They're maybe strange or unique to, do, to you, but don't get intimidated. You are an intrepid writer, filling your toolbox with rhetorical moves to increase your power to communicate. Right? Right. Okay. So the first one is anaphora. And I've made a little structure for you uh, up at the top by the word anaphora. Anaphora is when you repeat a word, a phrase, a clause at the beginning of parts of your sentence. So here's an example. You see, you, you'll see uh, from Walt Whitman here and Martin Luther King how this works in poetry and in oratory, which seems easy. Both of these are kind of meant to be spoken out loud. You can see how the structure is on the left-hand side of these sentences. The repetition comes at the front. Uh, for, the, for the Walt Whitman uh, segment from Song of Myself, it's for me, for me, etc. And then the variation comes after. Same with the Martin Luther King uh, quote from the I Have a Dream speech. The phrase I have a dream starts each new sentence and creates a new anticipation for the variation on what kind of dream he is dreaming. This is anaphora. Here's an example that I put up here just because I think you might be interested in finding something more, a little more academic. Of course, Whitman can use uh, anaphora in his poetry, but can we use it in our prose? And this example comes from science writing, uh, Lauren Slater's ar uh, article, Dr. Daedalus. So if you want to, you can go ahead and pause and see how this is working here. I think this is a beautiful uh, segment of writing from Lauren Slater. The opposite, if you will, of anaphora is epistrophe, where the variation comes first and then the repetition afterwards. We saw this with the Adrian Rich qu quote, if it doesn't smell of the earth, it isn't good for the earth. You see how that's working? And then I also wrote this example myself. If you want to pause it, you can read this uh, one uh, beneath there. That's another example of epistrophe. Then finally, there's isocolon. Isocolon is when you repeat an entire phrase or clause or sentence in completely and exactly. There's no real variation in the structure. I found this example here. Watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions, etc. You can see how each of these sentences is structured exactly the same. That's isocolon. And you can go online and find examples of all of these terms all over the web. And to tell you the truth, I couldn't find who actually said this. <laughs> some people said it was Lao Tzu, some said it was... Ralph Aldo Emerson, so whatever. I want to pause here before we get into our exercises and say that I have been covering repetition in the structure of language, but there's also repetition of ideas when we use pronouns, when we use certain um, cohesive elements like transitions. We're creating repetition in the minds of the readers, but not exactly in structure. When we create lists, when we go first, blah, 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 second, that's a repetition of an idea, and it creates patterns. We love patterns. There will be other lessons on the Style Academy that will talk about uh, the scheme of repetition as ideas rather than just structure, which is what we've been talking about here. Okay, you ready to do some exercises? I have three exercises for you here. And all three of them are imitation exercises, meaning that I'll provide you with a text, and then you'll write your own text imitating the repetition in the provided text. So get out a paper and pencil or open a word processing program and get ready. Let's start with repetition of a word. 
Here's the sentence about money from earlier in the lesson. Select a key term you're interested in. It can be a term from a current writing project or a topic you want to write about in the future, like video games or poverty or memes or whatever. Write a, com write a commentary about that term that looks similar to what you see here. Pause the video now and imitate this text using your own term. For exercise two, we're going to imitate two sentences from the book of Corinthians in the New International Version of the Bible. You see here the phrase, like a child, repeated. Is that anaphora or epistrophe? Yep, you got it. It's epistrophe because it's coming at the end of those clauses. Imitate these two sentences, but instead of like a child, write like a fill in the blank. Insert your own word from your own past experience. You could say, when I was a little league shortstop, I, or when I was a ballerina, I, something like that. Imitate the rest of the text by giving us something interesting to think about related to the word you chose. Pause the video now and imitate these sentences by creating your own epistrophe. Exercise three will be a challenge. You've imitated epistrophe, now let's try anaphora. The long text before you comes from a letter that the civil rights leader Martin Luther King wrote while in jail in 1963. Most of what you're looking at is actually one sentence that begins, but when you have seen and ends with, then you will understand. Pause the video and just read this sentence. King here is trying to convince white preachers that the time for race justice is now. And he constructs this masterful sentence using the anaphora, when you, nine times to make that case. And a quick warning, there's an offensive racial slur here, which adds to the emotional power of what he's writing. So I'd like you to imitate King's anaphora, when you, in your own sentence, describing an incident or dimension of your own life that you think maybe your audience might not fully understand. For example, if I was writing, I might write about my migraines and write something like, when you have been nearly blinded by a dull throb that feels like it's about to pop your eyeball out, dot, 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 then you will understand what it's like to have a migraine. But I want you to repeat your anaphora at least five times in the sentence in a way similar to what King is doing here. Pause the video now and write your sentence. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on the scheme of repetition. I hope now you have some new ideas about how you can use repetition in your writing. Since these schemes are often so dramatic, so obvious and in your face, you may want to think about how to use them sparingly, appropriately, at the right time. Your instructor can help you think through your scheme choice as you work on your writing projects.